All right, to get started, we're going to set up an enemy prefab. So let's go ahead and right click in our hierarchy, create a 3D object, and we could do a cube for now. And we'll go ahead and reset the transforms. And on the position of the Y, put it up 45. So currently right now our mesh is this cube here, which we could just swap out with the geometry for whatever our enemy might be. Maybe name this enemy cube for right now. And let's grab our materials. Go ahead and grab our, maybe our matte player. Go ahead and duplicate this. Just do control D. And then we'll rename this and change the color to a, and then we'll go ahead and Put that on our cube. There we go. So now we have our cube. We got our enemy over here in the corner. Now let's go to our scripts folder, right click, and create a new C sharp script. We're going to call this enemy movement. Select our enemy cube and go ahead and put this script on there so we don't forget later on. And we'll go ahead and double click to open that up. All right, let's go ahead and delete our start method here and put in some variables. So we're gonna do our brackets and serialize field. We're gonna serialize this so we can see our variable inside the Unity inspector. And we have a float decimal place number, right, for our speed of the enemy. And you know what, for right now, we'll go ahead and set this, uh, say, to 1.5, and it's a float, so we'll put an F and then a semicolon. And we'll also do the same thing, and this one is going to be our stop distance. For our enemy, we're going to have the enemy follow the player and then stop at a certain distance. Then we also need our target, the player, that is, that the enemy is following. To have our enemy follow the player, we're going to use the move towards. So how do we define access and call that? What are the three parts of it and how do we write it? The first thing would be the format. So we have the vector three move towards our current, then our target, and then we have a float for the max distance delta. So the three parts of this R is the current is going to be the position to move from. In other words, your enemy's current position, right? The target is the position to move towards. And then our float number here is going to be the distance to move current per call. So that's when you call this method per call, it's going to run. So using it in update is going to be per frame. We'll end up changing that so it'll be per second, though. So the first thing we need is we, we need to determine the direction that we're going to be moving towards. And we're dealing with vector three here, right? The direction. So we're going to assign this to a variable. And we're going to call that vector three target direction. And to get the direction that we want to move towards, all we have to do is get our target dot position minus our transform dot position which is going to be our enemy's position and it'll look for that every frame assign it to this variable and then so we're going to take our enemy's position and we're going to move towards going from our current position to the target's position and we're using that speed variable for the distance uh, per, right now it'd be per frame. Now we want to make this per second so we can do times dot delta time, but we could also put this in a variable here. So we'll just do a float and we'll call this a step. And then we can change our speed variable here to step. Save this. And I rush to jump in and play test and it's not working. Select the enemy cube and you'll see we forgot to assign the target. What are we following? So let's drag in our player or we can click the target symbol here. 
and we can just find our player or we could simply just drag our player into the transform. We can save that and then now you'll see that our enemy follows. Now our enemy isn't rotating uh, towards the player or anything so what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and determine the facing forward of the cube here which is going to be our blue axis. So what I'm going to do is just right click on our enemy and I'm going to create another 3D cube here and we're just going to do uh, 0.3 and 0.3 and then we can pull it out so we just know the direction that the cube is facing and I think that's fine call it pointer cube and we'll go back into our script now we need it to actually rotate so we have our target direction so this vector 3 here is actually getting the direction the vector looking at so we're going to use that so now Okay, so now we are calling the rotate towards using a similar format. You can see here we've got our current where we're looking towards, right? Then we have the target where we want it to look towards. And then we have these two floats, one for the max radians delta, that's the measurement in angles, and our max magnitude delta, which we have set to zero. And we could set this just to 1F or even just to the step value, and that would work um, as well. And then we have our rotation, which we're setting the rotation of our enemy uh, to have this function look rotation using our new direction. So the new direction is getting the vector, and then we're using quaternions, which uses to store our rotations of the enemy and it's going to have the enemy look at that direction that we have stored. So it just kind of creates this clean code. The other thing that we could do is just a cool debug tool. We could do debug instead of dot log. We could do draw ray so we can see. And we're going to take our transform.position, use the new direction. And then the color, we can just use red. And we'll save that. Go ahead and hit play. And you can see our enemy now is turning. And you can just barely see the ray at the moment. But in this scene view, you can see the red line coming out. So our enemy goes through the walls. One thing that we can do to fix that real quick is just add in a rigid body to give our enemy some mass. There we go. All right, so now to get in, we want to have a stopping distance as well for the player. Uh, for the enemy following the player we could do like an on trigger enter on trigger exit and use a boolean but it would be probably a little bit more effective just to have a simple variable and we have that variable not being used yet but right here with our float stop distance so the first thing that we're going to need to do is encapsulate our code here so we can just select all of this right click and quick factorings. We're going to extract this method and we can just call this maybe follow target and apply. And then following the target, we only want to do if we're within the stopping distance. So we'll write our if statement here. And there we have it. So we're getting the distance from our enemy to the target and we're checking to see is it greater than our stop distance and here 
we'll do we'll just copy and paste in our follow target method so every frame it'll call follow target if it's greater than our stopping distance ha whoops so this should be not greater than this should be less than so that way we're telling it hey only follow the player within this certain amount of distance which we don't have set so we'll save that go into unity we could just do say uh, two for the stopping distance right now and we'll test this out so we should start player doesn't follow but if we come within two units then the player follows and then the player stops so it's a little too short maybe we'll try five there we go so you can see players much faster able to zoom out so we could put our stop distance maybe six for right now but that seemed pretty good i don't know about you but i'm excited to do a few more things